I'm just a wild woman. Dancing to the beat of her own drum, the wild woman is an admirable symbol of freedom. But on screen, she's often marginalized and painted as a basket case you should stay away from. Poor thing, it's like a lonely tornado. Who does with her? Oh, she's embarrassing herself, right? So how do you spot a wild woman on screen? She's a free spirit who can't be tied down. I'm a golden starfish! She's mysterious and a little aloof, hiding much of herself from public view. You like to talk about your life. I don't like to talk about mine. But if you do get a glimpse of her feelings, you see she's intense, even ferocious. If anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Self-reliant and carving her own path, she's often alone, but not lonely. Yes, I'm alone, but I'm alone and free. Frequently with no boyfriend in sight. I shall die a bachelor. She might have a lot of good friends, who are girls. I love you, Zena. I love you too, Cameron. She could be the cool aunt, and all this might be code for being queer. And I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. Rarely the protagonist, she tends to be a side character, having kick-ass adventures on her own just off screen. Or this too independent woman might come across to other characters as a cautionary tale, showcasing our shared anxieties about a truly free lifestyle. But at her core, the wild woman represents individuation and our primal desire to live fully and freely as our authentic selves. Here's our take on the wild woman and what happens when she takes center stage, bringing us along on a journey of radical self-discovery. How wild it was. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. Since you're a fan of this channel, I know you love movies as much as I do. That's why I'm excited to tell you about this video's sponsor, Mubi. Mubi is a curated streaming service that premieres a new film every day. If you're looking for more wild women after watching our video, Mubi always features up and coming and renowned female directors and actresses. Right now, Mubi is offering our viewers 30 days free. Click the link in the description below to start streaming now. This character type is a natural woman. The original wild woman was Artemis, virgin goddess of nature and the hunt. Artemis, known as Diana to the Romans, was the twin sister of Apollo, the god of civilized things like the sun, art, and math, but his sister ruled over a more feral domain. She made her home in the forest. Artemis is most famous for two things, never marrying and killing the one man who ever saw her naked. He hid and watched her bathe. Diana turned him into a stag and his own hounds tore him apart. A wild woman's independence is core to her sense of self, and she is very protective of it. I don't believe I will ever marry. I'm happy as I am. Modern day Dianas are fierce, attuned to nature, stand up for the vulnerable, and don't worry about seeming unfeminine. A wild woman also retains Diana's anger issues. Then I rip off his arm and shove it where the sun don't shine. Then I reach down his throat and shake his hand. When you're beloved by a wild woman, you are really, truly loved. But her affections can flip on a dime, and you do not want to get on her bad side. Katniss Everdeen starts the Hunger Games series as a prototypical Artemis, preferring to hide out in the woods and hunt to survive. We see this character's protective side when her sister is threatened, which leads to Katniss volunteering as a tribute. I volunteer as tribute! Eventually, her wild refusal to bow down results in her leading the revolution, but not without a lot of resistance to that role. This revolution is about everyone, and we need a voice. Then you should have saved PETA. Incidentally, Jennifer Lawrence's breakout role, Winter's Bone, also is an Artemis type, who's comfortable in nature and driven by looking out for her more vulnerable loved ones. I got a little brother, a little sister, 12 and 6. Well, who's taking care of them right now? I am. You might say the wild woman's big moment in 20th century culture was as the flapper. This new woman who rose to prominence in the 1920s was known for her boyish physique, her wild dancing, and her independent streak. I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. She broke with her foremothers via her androgynous look through abandoning corsets and cutting off her hair. 
and the look was linked to political empowerment since it came into vogue right as women were gaining the right to vote. F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote that Joan Crawford was the best example of the flapper, dancing deliciously, laughing a great deal, young things with a talent for living. Well into her middle age, Crawford's star persona was defined by her independence and the fact that men were intimidated by her strength. Lie to me. Tell me all these years you've waited. Tell me. All these years I've waited. Catherine Hepburn, on the other hand, was a wild woman who did find her equal. The Spencer Tracy Catherine Hepburn pairing lasted decades on screen, casting Tracy as the only man not intimidated by Hepburn's wild woman nature. I love you. Even when I'm sober. Even when you're brilliant. The Hepburn Tracy duo echoes Artemis's relationship with Orion, the only man in the ancient world who could handle the wild goddess, though it's unclear whether Orion and Artemis were lovers or just hunting buddies just as the true nature of Hepburn and Tracy's relationship is still a matter of considerable debate. Maybe they were bisexual. Maybe they were gay on Tuesday and straight on Wednesday. They had to make up a story, a cover story, in order to survive. Meanwhile, Marlena Dietrich made androgyny both normal and a glamorous movie star look, notably in her iconic tuxedo scene in 1930's Morocco. She was doing it to turn on both the woman and the man. The Wild Woman came to TV sitcoms in the 70s and 80s as tomboys were finally given space on the small screen. Joe drove her motorcycle into the Facts of Life in 1980 and clashed with girly girl Blair. Uh, is this where I'm supposed to be? Uh, delivery boys usually use the rear entrance. Delivery boy? Or flirted, depending on your perspective. I know a phony when I see one. You should. You spend enough time looking in the mirror. <laughs> On Happy Days, rock star Susie Quattro played cool chick Leather Tuscadero, known for her tomboyish personality and appearance. Leather, this is Ralph Mao. How? Charm. Leather formed an all-girl band on the show. We formed a band, Leather Sways. And Quattro was a major inspiration for real-life wild woman Joan Jett to learn guitar and co-found The Runaways. And glycerine queen, Susie Quattro. The wild one. Crawford, Hepburn, Dietrich, Joe, and Leather all fit certain non-traditional female stereotypes society has about queer women. You're not extending enough on your follow-through. Which play into another common aspect of the wild woman, queer coding. Hey, girlfriend. The original Wild Woman, Diana, with her independent nature, her pack of gal pals, and her refusal to marry a man, is often considered a symbol of lesbian liberation. If power lesbians represented Manhattan's chicest new social hive, Charlotte was about to meet their queen bee. Diana the Huntress. I got her on sale. Because queerness is usually something that can only be hinted at in American pop culture, Sneaking LGBTQIA plus references into an otherwise straight work is known as queer coding. I want to show you something. May I? And so, watching stories about wild women can sometimes invite reading between the lines. In the 90s, Xena and Gabrielle were two wild women who were written as a couple. They raise a child together, they literally die for each other on multiple occasions, and generally wander ancient Greece in a cloud of sexual tension. Come on, Gabrielle, let's get wet! Come on, Gabrielle, get your gear off! But this great romance happened wholly in code. Are you sitting on the soap? I was wondering what that was. As co-creator Rob Tappert told Entertainment Weekly, the studio was so concerned that it would be perceived as a lesbian show that they would not allow us to have Xena and Gabrielle in the same frame of the opening titles. Studios are still gun-shy about featuring explicitly queer characters in blockbuster movies. Valkyrie, a wild woman who has relationships with men and women in the comic books, had the one scene confirming her sexual orientation cut from Thor Ragnarok. There are nine characters in the, in the comic books that are queer or bi, so Valkyrie's one of them, something that you wouldn't necessarily get in this movie. The queer-coded wild woman often gets shunted into roles of the gay-coded best friend or the cautionary tale wild woman. The 1996 film Foxfire centers on a girl gang that coalesces around wild woman Legs, played by Angelina Jolie. 
That's kidnapping. That's just a word, Maddie. Don't let it scare you. You're what's scaring me. Viewpoint character Maddie eventually goes back to her boyfriend and her college plans, and Legs represents a dangerous road not taken in Maddie's more conventional story. That time she had a crush on a girl and almost killed a guy. I'll never forget you. You're my heart, man. On the flip side, the idealized version of the Wild Woman side character is the cool role model the protagonist wants to be like. She would say things like, isn't every story a story of betrayal? I could only agree with her. It was too much fun to agree with her. She lives how she wants, and it's not ruining her life like with the cautionary tale. It's no accident that a common subtrope of the Wild Woman is the often queer-coded cool aunt. An aunt is a mother-like figure just outside of the nuclear family who represents a parallel universe, a glimpse of what the future could be if the child diverges from their actual mother's values. In the Daria episode, I Don't, our favorite teen curmudgeon feels trapped in her family's stifling heteronormative melodrama. What a hideous twist of fate. Me, a bridesmaid. Until she's whisked away by her cool aunt Amy. Things are getting ugly. I suggest we make a hasty but unobtrusive exit. Really? Let's go find a place that serves cheese fries. Amy's presence reassures Daria that she doesn't have to become her mother when she grows up. I found myself all grown up with my own point of view and feeling no particular obligation to listen to anyone else's BS. You can beat me with I have nothing to prove to you. For centuries, the Wild Woman has existed on the edges of the narrative, because the Wild Woman's carefree, independent lifestyle sounds unrealistic and outside of what society tells us is normal behavior for women. So when a Wild Woman is the focal point, the narrative is often a rebuke of the society that deems her wild. Carol Danvers is too unruly for both humans and the Cree. Her impetuousness and emotional volatility are her strengths, but society has convinced her they're weaknesses. But can you keep your emotions in check long enough to take me on? Or will they get the better of you as always? Captain Marvel centers on Carol reconnecting with her emotions and learning how to gain power from them. I've been fighting with one arm tied behind my back. But what happens when I'm finally set free? It's a love story, because it's a woman falling in love with her own resilience. And if you ask some viewers, it's also a love story between two women in the Air Force. The Frozen series is another where the wild woman gets to lead. Elsa is a wild woman who's taught to rein in her emotion-based superpowers because they scare the patriarchy, aka her dad, the king. Conceal it. Don't feel it. Don't, Don't let, let it show. show. While her sister longs for romance, Elsa wants to feel accepted and to feel alive. Who cares about danger when there's love? Ugh, Anna, ugh, kissing won't save the forest. <laughs> but over her two movies, Elsa discovers that she's not meant to lead over civilization. She belongs to nature, like Artemis. She's supposed to love herself, ride horses made of water, and flirt with forest maidens. You know, you belong up here. A wild woman's quest for freedom is a journey of finding identity. Something's like crossed over in me, and I can't go back. In the words of Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes from her book Women Who Run With the Wolves, developing a relationship with the wildish nature is an essential part of women's individuation. In order to accomplish this, a woman must go into the dark, but at the same time, she must not be irreparably trapped captured or killed on her way there or back. Hardship is often the catalyst for a wild woman's inner exploration, whether it's the loss of a loved one, the end of a relationship, or being ground down by the patriarchy. I'm not a hobo, and that's probably because women can't walk out of their lives. They've got kids to take care of, they've got parents to look after. You sound like a feminist. I am. But the wild woman does not become feral. She rediscovers her authentic self, reflecting on her innate primal instincts and reassessing her core values in life. There's a sunrise and a sunset every day, and you can choose to be there for it. And she's a mirror to help us dip our toes in the water of self-discovery. So what can we learn from the wild women of pop culture? Love your solitude and your freedom. I love my liberty too well to be in any hurry to give it up. Don't worry about what the world thinks. Own your inner ferocity and protectiveness, and don't let anyone mess with you. Oh, please. You and what army? Yeah.
Me and the army. Embrace your inner cool aunt. By the way, your aunt's really cool. Yeah, I know. She's a little unpredictable sometimes. And live unafraid. That's the wild woman motto. If a man came into your life, wouldn't you want to compromise? <laughs> Stupid. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Please subscribe and never miss a take. Thanks again to Mubi for sponsoring today's video. This summer, Mubi kicks off the series Sex, Truth, and Videotape, French Feminist Activism. It's dedicated to the work of Delphine Seyrig and Carol Rosopoulos, pioneering filmmakers of the French feminist movement. In the spirit of celebrating wild women, I highly recommend their documentary Be Pretty and Shut Up, coming soon to Mubi later this month. It features never-before-seen interviews with iconic actresses such as Jane Fonda, Shirley MacLaine, and Juliette Berthaud discussing their frustrations surrounding the movie industry. And that's just one of the amazing movies the service has to offer. Movie's selection covers everything from iconic directors to emerging auteurs. It is the perfect place to discover and watch beautiful, interesting, incredible films. Right now, Movie is offering our viewers 30 days free. So click the link in the description below to start streaming now.